Welcome today to Holy Trinity in Air and to our worship for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. In our worship today we sing the hymn Thou Whose Almighty Word and after the communion Andrew plays his own composition, The Mystery of Love. So welcome as we gather in Christ's name and in his presence. Welcome to Holy Trinity in Air. Wherever you may be, however you may be feeling, welcome as we gather in Christ's name, as we rejoice in his love for us, in his presence with us. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace and may we know his peace in our hearts, in our homes and in our world. And so we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are his children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because he loved us first and so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith as we trust in his love mercy and grace. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now today's special prayer, the collect for today. O Lord, Watch over your household with constant love, that supported by you alone, we may always stand firm in your protection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighbouring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. 
give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. So here I am standing in the pulpit of Holy Trinity Church, and as they used to say, six feet above contradiction. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've just heard Mark's account of one of Jesus' first miracles, as he begins his ministry in Galilee. And as with the changing of water into wine in John's Gospel, Mark uses this miracle when Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law in Capernaum as a sign and a signpost that points us to Jesus and his ministry, to what lays at its heart. That Jesus was sent by God to bring to his people and to all people healing, new life, and a new beginning. Today is the first anniversary, plus one day, of my institution as Rector of Holy Trinity. And what a year it's been! None of us could have foreseen what was to happen, and all that would unfold with the coming of the Covid pandemic and all that it has brought with it. It has not been the year that any of us expected or foresaw, hoped or prayed for. Instead, it's been a year full of fear and worry, suffering and pain. Lives and livelihoods have been turned upside down. And for some, this year has brought the loss of loved ones. And for so many others, the loss of the future for which people had planned and worked. Our nation, our world, ourselves, we all inhabit a present we did not expect and faced a future we cannot know. That is where we are. And yet, we are not without hope. As today I want to look back, and as we look forward, back to my first sermon, which I preached here in this pulpit a year ago, words I spoke then and I repeat today, thank you for inviting me to share with you on our journey of life and faith as we look to the future to which God is calling us. We may not know where, but we do know that we do not face the future alone, for God is with us to give us courage and confidence, and through his Spirit to sustain and strengthen us. And we have one another. As we look to the future, as his community of disciples, his people here, called to love God and one another. We are called to nurture, help, and support each other and those around us. But we don't only have one another. We have God with us. And as Jesus brought healing and new life, a new beginning to Peter's mother-in-law, he offers the same to us as a nation, community, and individuals. As the prophet Isaiah wrote in the Old Testament reading set for today, he gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. Jesus offers to us hope new beginnings. And we hear the promise that if we wait upon the Lord, so he will renew our strength. He will give us the strength that we need so that we can proclaim in our lives and living the message that he proclaimed, the good news of the gospel. Again, I want to echo what I said in my first sermon to you. We are called by Jesus to be people who make a difference and whose lives and living bring God's light and life, bearing witness to his love, mercy and grace. A people whose love reaches out through the doors of our church in loving service and care, 
that brings healing and reconciliation to those around us. A people who witness to God's kingdom of love and peace that is built upon the foundations of justice and truth. I also, in those early days, set out a plan of action which has been rather thwarted by the pandemic. But the pandemic will come to an end. And we will, God willing, soon be able to take our next steps together. And it was the call to listen and to learn. To hear one another's stories, ideas, hopes and dreams for Holy Trinity and your part in our future. So that trusting one another, we are able to be open to what we think and feel and able to move forward together as God's people. We're called to review and renew. This is an amazing community with many gifted and committed people. This we must celebrate and give thanks to God. Give thanks to God for our church community and for you. I do not need to tell you that we are going through a difficult and testing time. Now, as we turn to face the future, let us ponder and pray and review our life as a community of faith. We need to look at where we are and what we're doing and how we may move forward by being open to God and his spirit that we can hear what he is saying to us and calling us to be and become. We have so many God-given gifts in our church. It's sacraments, it's liturgy, it's music and worship. And so we rightly celebrate our inheritance. We give thanks for this church and for all that we have received. As a bit of a traditionalist at heart, I really appreciate and value all of that. Nevertheless, we are living in changed and changing times. Our Zoom service today is testament to that. And as we offer to God the best of who we are and what we have, so we are called to be open to new ways of being, new ways of being the church and of his people in the times in which we live and the future into which he calls us. We are called too to deepen our discipleship and to live God's love, two vital parts of Christian life and faith. We are all called to be Jesus' disciples, here in air or wherever we may be, called by him into his service, to be people who in our life, living all that we do, all that we say, all that we are, express his light, life and love, to those around us. He calls us to be his people, open to his spirit, so that we may be renewed and recreated, that we may deepen our faith, grow our church and build his kingdom. As we already know, it is in our shared study, reflection, prayer and worship that we can discern the way forward and towards where God is calling us. Now, None of this is rocket science, but neither is it easy. There are no shortcuts and no easy fixes. None of us have a magic wand. But when you welcomed me as your rector a year ago, we set out on a journey together. And like any journey, God is calling us to move forward from where we are to where he calls us to be. And so together, we can and we will walk the path ahead of us with Jesus in our midst, sustained by his word, our worship and our fellowship, and building on the foundations of our prayers and the love and care we have for one another. By this, 
and in reaching out in the power of his spirit to others, to those beyond our church's walls. We will become who he calls us to be and do all that he calls us to do. I want to end with some words from the prophet Isaiah, words that promise strength to us as we continue on that journey of our life and faith together. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And so let us step out into the future, into the future into which we are called, together with courage, confidence, and hope. Amen. And so let us pray. Loving God, we rest in your presence with us and your love for us as we hold fast to your word and your promise that you are the everlasting God, that you do not grow faint or grow weary, that you give power to the faint and strengthen the powerless, and that those who wait for you, who wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary, shall walk and not faint. And so in a few moments of quiet, we rest in your love, held and upheld by your Spirit, that we may be renewed and refreshed, and our hope and our faith rekindled. We give thanks that you love us, that you are here and hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, we live in a time of fear and uncertainty, where each day can be a struggle and the future unsure. Help us to trust in your presence and know your peace. May we in our lives and living in acts of kindness and care, words of comfort and support, in who we are, and what we say, make your presence known and your love real. We pray for all who, like Simon Peter, care for loved ones, and all who offer care to those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Those who are known to us, and those who are known to God alone. We pray for all who have been affected and infected with COVID-19 and all whose lives have been changed by it. Be with all those who are in hospital at this time and all those working in our hospitals and hospices, in care and nursing homes and all who care for others at home or in our communities. We give thanks for the continuing rollout of the COVID vaccination, for all who deliver it, and all those who work in medical research against this and so many other viruses that afflict and ravage our world and the lives of so many. Lord Jesus, your healing touch reached out to all those who sought you, Pour out your compassion on those whose needs we bring to you now. 
may your presence bring to them and to us the strength that we need to face all that lies before us, trusting your promise to be with us each hour of each day and on each step of our journey of life and faith. Lord, we commend to your love and to your care all those we hold in our hearts who have passed from us to your nearer presence, who have passed through death to life eternal. Hear us as we offer you these are prayers, praises and petitions, as we join our prayers with all your people in heaven and on earth, as we pray, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let us offer these gifts and ourselves to the Lord. For yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth, in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word, existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night, when he was given up to death, Knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Come to me, says the Lord, and you will find rest for your souls. So we come to him as we trust in his love for us, in his presence with us, as together we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. As we pray, God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus our Saviour, who feeds his people and gives them eternal life. Though we cannot consume the gifts of bread and wine, 
we thank you that we do receive Christ's saving presence, the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Saviour. Amen. And so let us give thanks that God shares his life and love with us, is present with us each hour of each day, on each step of our journey of life and faith. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. Generous God, in word and Eucharist, we have proclaimed the mystery of your love. Help us so to live it all of our days, that we may be signs of your wonders in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
May God bless us when all our days are grey ones and help us when we're anxious and alone. May God guide us when the path of life is hidden and give us courage that is greater than our own. May God bless us when frightening things surround us and hold us close, no matter what befall. May God bring us, when troubled days are over, the peace that has no ending and the love that waits for all. And so may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and all those whom you love. And may you know his peace and his presence with you, today and forevermore. Amen. And so let us go to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>